Why are people gay? Well, we've covered that in a previous video from the biological and environmental perspective of why people are gay. I've covered what causes people to become gay, according to science. But what is the inherent reason for it? What is the inherent purpose for it? Because for example, I'm attracted to boobs. I'm attracted to women. The purpose for that is reproduction. That helps me to carry on my genes. But what about a guy who's attracted to other men? That doesn't aid in your survivability because you're not reproducing. That doesn't allow your genes to survive. But people today, they give meaning to pretty much anything animals or people do, which is absurd. There doesn't need to be any. Sometimes animals and people just do things, and it's not that deep. Now I know I'm gonna make a lot of people angry with that. In fact, they're gonna be saying, well, there's a correlation between birth order and sexuality. The more children you have increases the likelihood of having a gay child. And in fact, the younger they are, the more likely they'll be gay, which there could be statistical truth to that. The problem is it doesn't inherently indicate anything at all. Now people are gonna scoff at that, they're gonna get angry, they're gonna have their sophisticated explanations and how it aids in their survival of their entire family, their group. Maybe not for that specific individual, but for their group as a whole, it aids in their survival. They're gonna make that argument right now, but it doesn't make any sense. And it's arbitrarily placed. I'll give you an example. If you have a woman who's obese and she's pregnant, that child is twice as likely to have autism and is 30% more likely to have ADHD. So tell me, what is the inherent biological benefit to giving birth to children who have autism or ADHD because the mother's obese? How does that aid in a person's survival? You found the connection. There's a statistical connection there. Now tell me, where is the inherent benefit from this? How does this help our group at all? Where's the benefit of having a child with severe autism that can't function in society? How is having a child with ADHD because you're obese an inherent benefit? No, there is none. It's just something that happens because you're obese. It's a medical condition. What about women who are 35 to 39 years old having children and are approximately 4.5 times more likely to give birth to a child with Down syndrome? Where's the inherent benefit behind it. It's statistically observed and true. There is no evolutionary benefit to it. There is no social benefit. You can create theories on how it benefits us, but it's bullshit. What you're essentially doing is finding patterns in noise. You're the same as a person who's turning on a sink of water. And as the water flushes down the drain, you hear your own voice. You hear words and sounds, but they don't exist. It's noise. And you're hearing patterns or words in that noise. That is what people are doing with these statistical findings. But again, people will still be mad. They'll say, well, why is it found in animals? Of course, it's natural, it's good, it's fine, it's healthy. Yeah, it's natural. Anything that animals and people do is quote unquote natural by definition, but it doesn't mean it's inherently beneficial or morally good or bad. You're applying those labels based on what you already believe. And you deciding that this atypical behavior is beneficial is very arbitrary. And in fact, you can't really even say a lot of these animals are quote unquote gay or even conscious of what they're doing. Animals will mate with objects all the time. Do you think they're making a conscious statement about their sexuality, who they are, or benefiting themselves in any way when they mate with objects? These animals have programs, and based off of what cues are activated, it can cause a misdirected mating behavior, also known as an evolutionary trap. Just because something happens in evolution, we grow and become a certain way, doesn't mean it's inherently beneficial, or there's a purpose behind it, or anything. And in this case, I'm not making an argument that it's good or bad because of any of this. I'm simply saying, it is the way it is because it happened to be that way not because it's inherently beneficial or there's some sort of deeper strategy going on. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Nature finds a way and becoming gay and mating with objects also somehow increases their likelihood of surviving. No, it's bullshit. The way I view it is like a moth being attracted to a light. Moths are attracted to the light of the moon in order to direct them into a straight path. But when they see a light bulb, they'll be drawn to that. In fact, it commonly causes them to die. A moth to an open flame. They're programmed that way. That's how they're designed. But it's not a statement about who they are or inherently benefit them to be attracted to the light of a 
fire or a light bulb instead of the moon. The reality of the situation is, sometimes the reason why animals or people behave the way they do is because they just do it. And there doesn't need to be an inherent benefit to their group, to society, or themselves for doing something. And you don't need to attribute a deeper meaning or some sort of statement about how it increases our likelihood of survival because of this behavior. Which is also very funny statistically speaking because both ADHD and autism and homosexuality are all linked. Why do you think there's that joke, that common meme, that people who identify as they, them, or gay have a whole list of other things they identify with, such as having ADHD or autism or other mental conditions? It's not by chance. All of these things are inherently linked from a biological perspective. ADHD, autism, homosexuality are all caused by the same thing, prenatal androgens. And one of those things that causes that shift that is required is obesity or diabetes. Then you have people like Gabor and Marte that claim ADHD is not genetic, but it's passed down from the parents. His theory is, is that people when faced with stress have the ability to fight or flight, but children, they don't have that ability. What they're forced to do as a coping mechanism is to block it out. When you're faced with stressful things that you don't want to do, you don't want to listen to, you don't want to see, you have to block it out. Which is useful when you're a child and you can't get away from a stressful or traumatic situation but it's a harmful coping mechanism later in life. And for no particular reason whatsoever, certain groups are much more likely to have ADHD than others. You guys can put two and two together. But going back to the main topic, why do you think it feels like people are identifying as these things so much more than they did previously in history? I'm not talking about homosexuality. I'm simply talking about like autism or ADHD. I don't believe it's because it was underreported in the past. It obviously was underreported in the past. People People didn't even know what these things were, but the overall percentage I believe is higher than it was in the past, even if we could objectively measure them all. Because there's an objective connection between autism, ADHD, homosexuality, with obesity and diabetes, which is directly caused by our diet, an unhealthy lifestyle which is very new to humanity on a large scale. We have never had such high obesity rates ever in the history of humanity. But you know what else we haven't had in the history of humanity? This channel. Be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. But again, I know I'm just going to get a lot of hate from people and they're going to claim I'm homophobic for this. They don't care about the science. They don't care about actually what's true. They care about grifting and virtue signaling to their audience. So if you're one of those people who just claims I'm homophobic or I hate gay people or that science is going to increase the prejudice against your group, if you're one of those people who thinks that I don't care and you don't have a problem with me, you have a problem with the world itself. So that's all I can say. Take away from this information what you will. Anyways, that's it for this video. Please do check out some of my other videos. I go into very fun topics like this all of the time and I'm going to continue to. Like why some people are attracted to feet, why some people are into furries, or why people identify as the opposite gender. Different things like that. Anyways, happy 2025.